the Holy Spirit often seems to be the poor relation in the Trinity. So much emphasis is placed on Jesus and God the Father so often resembles the singular God of pre-Trinitarian faith that the Holy Spirit, as one theologian put it, always seems to be dressed in hand-me-downs. One Reformation debate helps explain the significance of the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther maintained that because Jesus was God, God is everywhere, so it was perfectly possible for Jesus to be present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. John Calvin countered that Jesus is fully human, so can only be in one place at a time, so is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. The Holy Spirit's work is to make Christ present, so the Holy Spirit makes Christ present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Calvin's way of putting things is immensely helpful and helps us recognise the Holy Spirit at work in church and world, making Jesus present in friend and stranger. Here's an anthem traditionally sung at ordinations, Victoria's Come Create a Spirit. It's also sung as cardinals enter the Sistine Chapel to elect a new pope.
Just as Catholics focus their understanding of the Holy Spirit on what takes place in transforming bread and wine into Christ's body and blood, so evangelicals see the Holy Spirit's work primarily in the inspiration of Scripture and the capacity of the preached word to make Christ present in the heart of the believer. Charismatics, meanwhile, tend to associate the Holy Spirit more with the direct action of God in marvellous events, like healing, prophecy and speaking in tongues. The Broad Church has seldom articulated a fully-fledged doctrine of the Holy Spirit. The monk Timothy Rees, later Bishop of Landaff, in his hymn Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling, takes a comprehensive approach, surveying several activities of the Holy Spirit, dwelling, brooding, raising, and most memorably, quickening, strengthening, and absolving. The hymn was made famous by its setting to Herbert Howell's tune, Salisbury. A real exploration of the work of the Holy Spirit would certainly describe how the Holy Spirit works through the acts of the Church, through the absolving of sins, the preaching of the word, the anointing of the sick, the washing of feet, the baptizing of new believers, and so on. But just as importantly, and perhaps more mysteriously, it would make clear how the Holy Spirit works beyond the Church, in the hearts of people far and wide, in the transformation of unjust structures and in the surprises and discoveries of new life and old truth. For each one of us, it's both wonderful and unsettling to perceive the action of the Holy Spirit on our own lives from their very beginning. Indeed, never more than in the conception that brought us into existence. The moment when all these insights come together is in prayer, when, as Paul tells us, the Holy Spirit gives us words to say and hears our sighs too deep for words.
Moses Hogan captures the joy of the Spirit in his glorious spiritual 